Hello everyone, my name is Jakara McLeod and today I will be answering a series of questions in reference to the circular flow diagram. But before I answer the questions, it is important that we understand how to read and interpret the circular flow diagram. As we all should know, or will learn today, the circular flow diagram is a well-known economic model. The circular flow diagram shows the interaction between two groups of economic decision makers, which are households, and firms, or also known as businesses, and the two types of economic markets, which are markets for factors of production and markets for goods and services. So first we will evaluate households. Households, which is located on the right side, include one or more persons who live in the same housing unit. Households own all of the economic resources in the economy. The economic resources include land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability, or otherwise known as human capital. Land is all natural resources. Labor is work for which you are paid. Capital is goods used to produce other goods or services. And entrepreneurial ability is human resource that combines other resources to provide new goods and services to the market. And businesses or firms are privately owned organizations that produce goods and services and then sells them. It is important that we understand that households and businesses interact in markets. The first market that we will be studying is the markets for factors of production. The market for factors of production is where households sell and businesses buy labor, land, capital, and human capital. So right here we see households. Households sell labor, land, capital, and human capital, which becomes the factors of production for firms and wages, rent, profit are given to households as income. So in exchange for resources, households earn income from the businesses Households sell economic resources and businesses pay them for it. So we see that households receive wages for their labor, they receive rent for their land, they receive profit for their human capital, and they receive interest, which is not listed here, for the use of their capital. The second market that we're going to evaluate is the markets for goods and services. So within the markets for goods and services is where households use part of their incomes to buy the goods and services produced by businesses or firms. So a common question that is asked in the about the circular flow diagram is what households do with income and what businesses do with their resources. The answers to those questions lie in the markets for goods and services. Here we see that firms sell goods and services, households buy the goods and services, use their income, part of their income, to spend money in the market for goods and services, which gives the firms revenue. So let's try that again. Households spend part of their income in the market for goods and services, which produces revenue for the firms. The firms produces goods and services, sells the goods and services, and the households buy the goods and services. One must take into consideration and note that that outer portion of the circular flow diagram is the flow of money and the inner per portion of the circular flow diagram is the flow of the economic resources. So businesses use the economic resources that they bought from households to produce goods and services. The payment firms receive is called revenue. Just a quick recap, markets for factors of production is where households sell economic resources and firms buy the economic resources and pay them back in income. And the markets for goods and services is where firms sell the goods and services, 
households buy the goods and services and spend part of their income to pay for the goods and services that they buy, which turn into the revenue for the firms. Now that we have an understanding, let's get into the questions. Question one. Harvey receives his first paycheck for working as an ice cream vendor. To which of the arrows does this transaction directly contribute? Okay, so let's take a look back at our circular flow diagram. Here, we see that Harvey receives his first paycheck from his job for working as an ice cream vendor. So Harvey provided lab labor or land, capital or union capital to the firm. And in return, the firm wages, rent, profit paid him for his labor income. So we see the bottom portion of the circular flow diagram attributes the transaction. So the answer for that question, therefore, has to be C. Question number two. Raymond buys a refrigerator for his new home. To which of the hours does this transaction directly contribute? Hmm. Let's take into consideration that the outer circle of the circular flow diagram represents the flow of money. So since it's not income that Raymond is getting, he's spending money. We know that D cannot be the answer. So then we look at A. This is spending. So Raymond buys. What does he buy? He buys a refrigerator. He buys a good and service from the firm. In this case, he buys a good from the firm. So, the firm sold the refrigerator and Raymond bought the refrigerator. So we see A and B are the arrows that this transaction directly contributes to. So therefore, the answer has to be D. Question number three. Which arrow represents the flow of goods and services? Without going back to our circular flow diagram, we understand that firms sell their goods and services right here, and households buy goods and services. So therefore, there's no other answer but D, because B is the arrow that represents the flow of goods and services. Question four, which arrow represents the flow of income payments? Hmm, every time we hear something that has to do with money, we look on the outside of the circular flow diagram because we understand that the outside represents the flow of money. So when we're dealing with payments, it's either A or D. Now, considering the fact that A is spending and the other side of A is revenue, we have to remember that D is wages and this section of D is income. So that leaves us no other choice but to understand that the arrow that represents the flow of income payments is D. Therefore, the answer has to be C. Question number five. Which arrow represents the flow of land, labor, and capital? Households produce and own land labor capital. Therefore, C represents the flow of land labor capital. So your answer therefore has to be B. Right here. Which arrow represents the flow of spending by households? Households spend in order to get goods and services. Spending, they spend money. The outside represents the flow of money. So A is the only answer that represents spending by households. So therefore, which I represents the flow of spending by households? Answer therefore is D. And that concludes the questions for the circular flow diagram.